What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be showing how you can add some CG mist to pretty much any live action or CG shot inside of Blender. This technique is super simple, but can add a lot of production value and depth to your scenes. Before we get started, I'd like to announce that we are having a 35% off sale on our City Builder 3D add-on for Blender. The full version of City Builder 3D includes over 100 building and skyscraper assets. In addition to three procedural buildings, there are several kits included. We have our industrial kit, our metropolitan kit, our Soviet kit, our Hong Kong kit, our derelict future kit, our cyberpunk clean future kit, our medieval kit, and as I mentioned, some procedural assets as well. We have each of these kits for sale separately on Blender Market, but when you get the full kit, you'll also get any future asset packs that we add to City Builder 3D as we grow this 3D asset add-on on the marketplace. For 35% off this October, just use the discount code October35. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. The first thing I'm going to do is just delete everything in our scene here for a clean slate, and and uh, now I'll press shift A, we'll add a camera. And the first thing I'm going to do is add our background video that we're going to add our CG mist to. So I've just have our camera here. I'm just going to go to the camera tab here. And then under background images, I'm going to check the little checkbox here and we're going to add an image. And depending on whether you want to add your CG mist to an image or a movie clip, you're going to want to select one or the other here. I'm going to add this mist to a movie clip and then I'll click on open and I'll navigate to our footage here. So I just have this uh, movie clip right here and I'll open that. As you can see here, it's loaded in our background image. And if I go to view viewpoint camera, you'll see that it's a nice background for us. So this is the shot we're going to add our CG mist to. And it's a super simple technique. Essentially what we're going to do is just recreate the general geometry of our live action shot here inside of Blender so that we can use a mist pass of that geometry and overlay it on top of our shot. And this particular shot, as you can see here, if I play through it, is locked down on a tripod. However, if you have some 3D movement in your shot, you can 3D track it and apply these concepts there as well. So if you're interested in 3D tracking and adding CG to live action, I have a tutorial on this channel. I'll put a link to that in the description. But anyways, I'm just going to line up our camera here so that the perspective of our 3D camera sort of matches the uh, live action shot here. So just kind of rotate this up and something like this. I'll, maybe I'll just add a quick plane here so we can see the ground a bit better. And I'll just use this to line up our camera, something like that. And depending on the focal length of your camera that you use to take your live action shot, you may want to change the focal length of your camera here. I think 50 millimeters should be about right. It might be a little bit wider, so I might change this to maybe 35 and uh, adjust this accordingly. All right, so something like that should be pretty solid. Now what I want to do is recreate the general geometry of this shot so that we can use a mist pass of that geometry and overlay it on top of our footage, as I mentioned. So the first uh, piece of geometry that's the most prevalent here is obviously under the bridge. So what we can do is I'll just press Shift A. I'll just add a very basic cube here and I'll just rotate this so it's kind of generally where the base of our bridge uh, support is here. Now, of course, depending on the uh, movement in your shot, you may need to be very accurate with where you place your geometry. So if you have a 3D track, for example, you might have to use those tracking points to position your 3D geometry a little bit more accurately. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to eyeball it. Since this video was taken with a tripod, um, we can get away with that. Just kind of generally place our bridge base here and try to line up our edges as best we can. All right, so this should be pretty good. Now what I want to do is I want to create the rest of our column here. So what I can do is I'll just select our cube here. I'll go to edit mode and I'll select the top four vertices, press E to extrude it. And then I'll just kind of create the general shape of our bridge support here. And again, depending on your scene, you may need to be more accurate with this, but you'll see that with a little bit of tweaking in the compositor, this should work just fine most of the time. So I'm just gonna keep extruding this up here. I'm just trying to outline our bridge here. And I'm just pressing S while our vertices are selected to scale up or scale down our uh, selected vertices here. And there we go, that should be just fine. And now we have a modeled out the base geometry of our uh, bridge support here. Now I want to create this bridge in the uh, background of our shot as well. So to do that, I'll just press Shift A and I'll add a very basic cube. And I'll just add this above our bridge support, rotate it around like so. I'll scale our cube here up so it's like the bridge. Go back to viewpoint camera and you can see it's coming along nicely. And I just want to position this so it's uh, in the general position of our bridge here. So just kind of line it up like so. And uh, yeah, make sure it's rotated correctly and that should be pretty good. 
So now we have our overpass as well as the base of our bridge support here. And to be more accurate with our mispass, we could of course model out the very intricate details of our bridge here. I'm not going to do this portion here where a lot of these details are, but feel free to do that for a more accurate mispass when we do that. I do want to cut out a hole here in between these two supports here. So what I'll do is I'll just press shift A, I'll add a very basic cylinder and I'll move this up here. I'll rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees and then I'll just scale it up on the x-axis and rotate it and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to position it where that hole would be generally within our scene here I'll scale it up something like that and I just want to try to recreate that geometry a little bit more precisely even though obviously we're just eyeballing it here it's gonna look a little bit nicer to actually have some of that geometry cut out for us all right, so something like this is pretty nice. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a Boolean modifier so that we can use this cylinder to cut out where these two 3D objects intersect and create that hole for our bridge support. So I'll select first our cube here. I'll go to our modifier properties tab. I'll add a modifier and I'll uh, use a Boolean modifier. And then I want to select with our object eyedrop tool here. I'll select our cylinder. I want to use the difference option for our Boolean modifier. And then I'll just click on this drop down menu and click on apply. And now as you can see here, if I delete our cylinder, now we have a hole in our bridge support here, which is exactly what we want. All right, so now we just need to model out the basic geometry of the water here on the ground, as well as these rocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use our ground plane here. I'll scale it up a bit so it covers our entire scene, like so. I'll scale it up a little bit more here on the uh, Y axis. And of course, to be as accurate as possible, you would uh, want to model out these rocks here on the edge of the water. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to kind of roughly sketch it out here. So what we can do is uh, while our ground plane here is selected, I'll just go to edit mode really quick. And while all of our vertices for the ground plane are selected, I'll go to edge, subdivide. I'll go ahead and increase the number of cuts to 10. Then I'll once again, I'll go to edge, subdivide, and increase it up to 10. I'll go ahead and enable proportional editing mode right here select that and now what I can do is I can just create uh, kind of model this area where those uh, rocks would be just so that there's a little bit of variation in the ground so we're just trying to create the general geometry of our scene here and uh, this should be about right you can see we're creating the general shape here now I want to add one more bit of geometry here for the background of our shot. So pretty much anything further than the uh, bridge here and the uh, kind of beach area here. We want to just add a plane in the background as that background. So I'll press shift A, I'll add a plane, press R, rotate it on the Y axis 90 degrees and drag this off into the background, scale it up pretty big, rotate it so it matches the general perspective. That's looking just fine. Now it's time to test out a render. So how this is gonna work is we're going to use a mispass of this geometry and overlay it on top of our shot. To kind of get a visual idea of what your mispass is going to be, you can just go to render view here. And right now we're just seeing our combined beauty pass. But to see our mispass, we can just click on this drop down menu here and switch the render pass to mist. And now you can see our mispass just fine. And now you can see where this is going here. Pretty much the geometry that is further off into the distance is brighter. And when we overlay this on top of our shot, it'll enhance the amount of mist that's off of the distance, which makes sense because mist gets more thick as things go further off in the distance. You're looking through more layers of it. So uh, this is the general idea here. I am rendering an Eevee right now, but I'd want to render this out in cycles just because I uh, prefer cycles generally. And we'll go ahead and change our render pass here to mist as well. Same general concept, obviously. Now, one thing we want to do before we go into our compositing process is we want to adjust how this mist pass is interpreted. So first thing we're going to do is under our view layer properties here. I'm going to enable the mist pass option and I'm actually going to deselect our combined and Z pass as well just because we're only going to be concerned with the mist for this composite. So I'll just select that mist pass here and then under the world settings tab you'll notice that once we select that mist pass option we have a mist pass drop down menu and I'll go ahead and select this and now what we can do is we can change the start and end point of our mist pass which is going to help us get a nicer gradient. Um, so what we want to do I think I probably want to bring this down to uh, zero so you can see that the mist is coming closer to the camera and then we can adjust the depth here depending on how much you know we want to see the mist in the background so you can see that as I increase the depth we're getting a little more detail here where those rocks would be by our uh, water as you can see 
if I bring it up to 24, we're not really getting into that any of that detail of the geometry that we created for our kind of uh, rocky beach there. So we wanna make sure that's at least in our scene so we can use that data uh, appropriately. This is looking pretty nice and now you can see that this is going to enhance the depth of the bridge in the background here as well, which is really nice. So this is looking pretty good. Now it's time to do a quick little test composite here. So I'll go back to solid view, go ahead and save our file just in case something happens. I'll just call it CTI Mist Tutorial. And save it. And now I'll just go to our render properties tab here. Make sure cycles is selected. I'm going to bring down the samples to maybe 40 just for the sake of the tutorial. I'll select the seed stopwatch for some noise variation. I'll go to film, enable transparent for our film. And this should be pretty good. Now I'm gonna to go to our output tab, 1920 by 1080p at 100%. For this specific case, we could render out a PNG sequence. Of course, normally I use OpenEXR, but PNG should be just fine with an alpha channel, of course. And then of course here, you can choose where you want to output your file. So go ahead and do that. Just create a new folder here, call it CGI Mist Tutorial Render. Okay. And accept that. And now what we're going to do is we'll just do a quick test render and go into the compositor to composite our mist on top of our live action shot. All right, so right off the bat, Blender is going to spit out a combined beauty pass for us, which is not exactly what we want. So let's get into the compositor and start playing around with our mist pass. So I'll go ahead and close our window here and go to the compositing tab and I'll select the use nodes option and I'll press shift A, we'll add an output viewer and we'll connect our image to our viewer image output. And I'm just pressing V to zoom out a bit. And now what we want to do is we want to combine our uh, live action shot into this composite. So I'll press shift A, I'll add an input movie clip, and then I'll just select our movie clip here. And now as you can see, if I connect this to the viewer node, we'll get our live action shot here. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that this movie clip is always the size of our render. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to distort, scale, add this right after our movie clip, then I'll make sure that it's the render size option. All right, so now that we have both our render layers as well as our movie clip, let's combine our mist on top of this shot. As you can see here, we have our mist pass output available to us here. So if we just add this to our viewer node here, you'll see what we're getting, which is exactly what we want. So what we want to do is we want to overlay this on top of our movie clip. So I'll press shift A, I'll add a color mix. I'm going to add our movie clip to one input, then I'm going to add our mist input to another, and then I'll take our image output to the viewer node instead of our mist pass. And right now our factor is at one, so let's bring this down to see what we're getting so far. And as you can see here, this is mixing between our mist pass and our live action shot. And obviously you can see some of the issues here. The first thing we want to do to make our composite a bit better is just change our blend mode here. So I'm going to change this to screen. And now what we want to do is we want to make sure that our mist is blurring into our shot effectively. So obviously if you're more accurate with your CG modeling, this is going to be integrated much better into your scene right off the bat. You can obviously see the hard edges here of some of our geometry that didn't line up perfectly, but with a little bit of blur, this should work out just fine. Or you can spend that extra time making sure that your geometry is a bit more precise. But uh, what I can do here is I can press shift A, I'll just add a filter, blur, add this right here. Then I'm just going to increase our X and Y values to say maybe 90. And now as you can see here, we're getting a little bit of flaring, but mist does tend to flare as light hits it. So it's not too bad. You can of course play around with the amount of blur that you have here. And I might just dial back our factor on our screen mode here, just so it's not quite as heavy. There you go, that's a pretty nice looking mist pass. I'll go ahead and connect our image output of our screen node to our composite as well. One thing we could also do is add a little bit of color correction to the mist itself. So we want the scene to feel a little bit colder. We can just add some color correction to the mist. So I'll press shift A, color, color balance. Add this right before our screen node here where we combine our passes. And then we can just cool everything down a bit and now it's much cooler. So this is a nice way to add a little bit more to your scene. And right now for me, I think the mist is adding a nice bit of depth to our scene. You can see here in the top right, the mist is adding a nice layer of depth to our bridge here, as well as our city in the background and the rocks. One thing I don't like is uh, the mist falls off pretty dramatically here in the foreground. What we could do to resolve that is just go back to layout mode here, go back to rendered view and readjust our mist pass. So I might just go back to our world properties and then I'll just bring down our depth a bit so that our mist is just showing up a bit more here in the foreground. I'll just click on render and render image again and let's recomposite with that new output. 
I'll go ahead and close our render result here. We'll go back to our compositing node setup. And it's pretty subtle, but there's a little bit more mist here in the foreground, which I think is helping a little bit. Not quite perfect in my opinion, but I think again, past the rocks here, everything is looking pretty nice. I'm just gonna keep adjusting a few little things here. Maybe just increase the X and Y blur to 100 each to blend everything into the shot a bit more. Already that's looking a little bit nicer, maybe 120. And I think that's looking pretty solid. Depending on how subtle you want your mist to be, you can uh, dial back down the factor here. So maybe 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is just enough to see the mist, I think, but you can still see the difference in depth from having a little bit of mist in comparison to no mist here at all when we dial it back entirely. So just a nice little way that you can add some procedural mist to your scene. Again, if you wanna be more accurate, if you wanna add a lot more mist to your scene and uh, get rid of these blur effects, just be more precise with the recreation of your geometry in your 3D world so that uh, you can overlay it a little bit more effectively. And of course, to render out your final composite here, you would just go to render and render animation and Blender will go through all of your frames and output your final composite to that file output that you have chosen. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what other visual effects you'd like to see on our channel, and I'll see you next time.